cat out here. Um, we'll get into it. Alex Pereira versus Yidri Prohaska 2, the rematch. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's get into it. Um, the UFC posted cage side footage, so let's go ahead and watch the knockout real quick. You know, at least Herb is doing better at letting people die. All right, Dominic Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> if that was Keith Peterson, it would have been over ever the high kick. But we'll get into how that happened and what what uh, what that was. But shout out everybody uh, in the chat. Fight Zone update. HLB Comer. Uh, rest. Data wear. Uh, respect. Thank you for joining. Um, yeah. Uh, going into this... Um, Obviously, it's a rematch. It's short notice for both of them. I think they both took this fight on two weeks' notice because this was supposed to be Conor McGregor's return. He pulls out. They Both these guys are savages, so they're like, we're down. Uh, kind of crazy for Alex Pedeta to put his belt on the line uh, on two weeks' notice. That's super ballsy. Uh, but clearly, he felt pretty good about this matchup, having faced him yeah. before. <laughs> um, first fight... Uh, Yidri won the first round, uh, got his leg chewed up, but ended up with a takedown, some ground control, won the first round, had Alex up against the fence at one point. Um, this fight, uh, not nearly as good for Yidri. Uh, again, they do the stare down, the crazy stare down for like 10 fucking minutes. I swear they they did the walkouts and they waited even longer to start announcing the fight because they're like, let's just keep the cameras rolling. They what timed it. it, it like they? Before the fight, I think they said, uh, Joe was like, uh, or John was like, Oh yeah, that was four four minutes and fifty eight seconds on the dot. Oh my god, just a round of staring each other down. And That's no crazy from either of them. Just fucking stone cold, dude. So I love both these guys so much. Um, okay, so fight starts. Uh, Yidri's switching stances a lot, which is good. I thought going into this, you probably want to be southpaw and take away the outside leg kick from Alex. Um, at best, you're going to eat inside low kicks, which aren't nearly as debilitating. Um, but he stands so heavy on that lead leg, he leans over his leg a lot. So the leg kick is there, obviously. But immediately, mm -hmm. I think it was like the second one that Alex threw, Yudra countered off of it. And I was like, okay, he's not just going to eat them this time. Um, and that was about it. <laughs> I think they said Yudra landed seven strikes in the fight. That's crazy, man. Yeah. That's absolutely insane. For how much movement he did throughout the entire fight to only hit seven times. Yeah. Man. Well, HLB Comer has just said in the chat, some observations, uh, I'm sure Will knows about these. Yidri dropping his hands in the video pre-fight and Blahovic noticing that before the fight, Yidri did something he never does. He smiled. <laughs> yeah, so pre-fight, Alex has said this now uh, after the fact. He said that they watched, you know how they show like during the broadcast, they'll show like clips of them backstage in the locker rooms and stuff, getting wet, ready and everything. They said that they saw him dropping his hands when he was returning from pr punching, and they were like, the high kick will be there. Uh, and so <laughs> during the event, they noticed the high kick was probably going to be there from the backstage footage. Um, While they were doing a TikTok dance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> first round, um, this is the end of the first round, this picture here, but um, y Alex was doing everything that he normally does. He's attacking the legs. He's jabbing the body. Um, he's just giving all these looks. You know what I mean? Like, he's so good at just, like, setting things up with just – he's limited as far as, like, his arsenal goes. It's not like he's throwing, like, Yair Rodriguez spin kicks and shit like that, you know? But he and his movement is so – like, he. it's not that it's limited. He just doesn't do anything. Like, he minimal. stays very, like, stationary all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's very minimal. Um, Yudri's dancing around, trying to get in. He can't quite get in. He ends up with like uh, double underhooks up against the fence. And I was like, okay, good. Because the takedown is obviously what you need to do in this matchup. But he couldn't get it. Uh, he never really dropped onto a leg or anything like that. Um, and he didn't really ever really work for any trips from what I remember. It was kind of just like holding him against the fence for a bit. Yeah, it felt like he was trying to like wear down his gas tank. But then like mm -hmm. Alex would hit him like four or five times in the body with those little shots to the body. And I don't think Yuri was ready for, I don't think like that much power coming from such a small space. And I don't think he, like he kind of brought his hand out, like he wanted to do it. And he was like, 
I don't like this at all. Yeah. And he like disengaged. And I think that kind of like threw him off the whole time. Yeah. And, and then at distance, Alex kicked his body a lot, but mostly with the right leg, um, the rear, the rear kick to the body of Yiju when he was Southpaw when they had the open stance. Right. Um, and then at the end of the first, he catches him clean with the left hook, the death touch. Um, Yiju goes down. If it were in the middle of the fight or the middle of the round, it's probably Done. over. But it's literally as he's falling, the bell rings, and you're like, "Oh no!" And Yizri, props to him, he wasn't out cold, and he literally caught he. The fight's being stopped for the end of the round, which you could still stop the fight as a whole, but Yizri is calling him into his guard, and I think those optics allowed them to continue the fight. Does that make sense? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. There's there's times where you know his fight, instinct saved that fight essentially at the end of that round. Yeah. Yeah, and I think if he had gotten up and he like fell over, they probably would have called it. Yeah, um, he was already stumbly a bit. Like his feet were yeah. not underneath him when he did stand up. So if he immediately stood up, he would have fallen so hard. Yeah, he stayed there, did some games and shit. Come on down, and then he smiles as he walks away. And it's like that's not what you want to see if you're a Yiji fan. This is not good. This is very bad. Um, but also, he took the shot. He took the shot uh hey shout out hlb comer hey that was good pronunciation let me hear your yidri prohaska i don't know about i, I spend more time trying to figure out how to say yidri uh i don't think you say prochaska i think it's just prohaska i know hlb comer is uh in tune to that accent or pronunciation so maybe he can school us on uh on uh <laughs> the last name but anyways second second round starts and within a few seconds oh it is uh oh pro prokaska i don't know send me a clip hb comer send me a clip of you saying it on instagram um but second round starts and immediately pereda steps in with the switch high kick off the lead leg it was something he never does never does it and you see yuju tries to go down uh to block his body he's like catching that kick that is not there yeah, he thinks he's going to the body because he was going to the body earlier in the fight. Um, and the high kick is just fucking beautiful. Clanks him on the side of the head, <laughs> drops him. Uh, there's a few pictures here, Rich, of him just – of just the sequence. I mean, we watched it at the top of the show, right? But, um, God, dude. Rolls the ankle. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's horrible. I didn't even notice. Oh, God. Yeah, oh, that's so rough. ugly. Uh, goes down, uh, and then Alex, it's not a walk-off KO. Alex has to jump on him, uh, hits, hits him with some extra shots. Herb Dean does, runs a full circle around them uh, and then stops it. And then, uh, hey, shout-out Sam. Uh, what do you say? Heck yeah. Live story of the fight. Love that my guy Gary got the win. Excited to hear the breakdown. We will get to it. We will definitely get to it. Um, but, yeah, Herb runs around, stops the fight, and then helps Yudri get up. And I'm I- like, dude. Let him I, I got to defend him on this one. I think he was more focused on not letting Alex touch him because true, Alex yeah. came over there and he was trying to like, Oh, I'm sorry. Or like I, yeah. oh, respect or whatever. And I think Herb was like, Hey, no, no, no. Get the, get out of here, dog. And, and that moment, he's also not going to be he's able to stop up. a 230 pound man from standing up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, God damn dude. So yeah, it's now two and zero for Alex. Um, knocked him out in the second round both times. This time, much more definitive because there was like, if you're in the Yizri camp, you could say, "Look, I won the first round. The stoppage was a little weird in the first fight. Um, you can't after this. This is nah. Alex is just so fucking good. It you, you're not going to, you're just not going to beat him like this. Uh, Even if this was a three round fight, it would have it would have yeah. been done. Yeah, Alex says, uh, or Sam says, they asked Dana about Poetana heavyweight, and Dana predictably says, John Jones is the pound for pound number one. Dana has to be memeing at this point. I've always thought Al- John must have some crazy dirt on Dana. The fact that they've kept him around, and not just kept him around, but have just like defended him so hard despite him fucking over things so many times. Um, they now, so yeah, alluding to that, uh, or after the fight in the post fight interview, they ask him about heavyweight and Alex is like, it's inevitable that I'll go to heavyweight. And it's, I mean, God damn dude. Um, I don't know. He's going to have to wait 
for a specific matchup at heavyweight because they'll probably get a title shot right away when he goes up. Aspinall, I think, runs through him. If Curtis Blades beats Aspinall, As- I think Curtis Blades runs through him just because they're so big and their grappling is so good. Um, John Jones is not going to fight him. Um, John Jones is going to fight Stipe if that even happens, which, uh, fun fact, um, with Andre Arlovsky leaving the UFC after his fight last night, uh, Stipe has no wins over a rostered UFC fight. <laughs> That's crazy. And he's getting to fight the belt, right for the belt. Uh, uh, Blunderbuss says, mean, oh, Genevieve says all- hi, and she loves Tosi's cat. Got to throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> I, at the same time, though, dude, like I'm so over this like media and, and UFC fast-tracking like everyone to multiple titles. Like, yeah, wh- where I mean, was this with DJ? Like, where where was this with, with all of these other guys that had to like fight well, 12 like, times? Just- they wouldn't let GSP go up for the longest time. Uh, I mean, yeah, and things have changed. I mean, like, BJ what's, what's Penn had to literally leave the UFC to get a, okay. a second shot. Like, but but then we're gonna talk about like, uh, even Yuri and Alex. They were both like, oh, these guys. It's unprecedented how quick they got. Well, I mean, if you give them three fights and then a title yeah. fight, you you had Sean O'Malley fight seven people before he got to a title fight. What is going well, on here? Guys. Bilal, Bilal Muhammad, Leon Edwards, division even. Um, yeah, it's 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 bullshit. They, they pick and choose. Obviously, Izzy um, being the champ led to Alex getting that fast rise. Um, they wanted to capitalize on the on the beef there and get him to that shot yeah. as soon as possible. Um, this is what I want to see. HB Comer says, "Let him kill Magomed uh, Ankalaev, uh, and he can go whoever to go fight whoever is heavyweight king." I agree. I think that's the move. Let him fight one last contender at light heavyweight, which is on Kaliev, the rifle contender. Um, because after he does that, I don't know who – there is really no rightful – my issue when someone goes up is when there's a rightful contender who is now losing a title shot. Yeah. And on Kaliev would be that guy if he goes up to heavyweight next. Um, it's also stylistically the most interesting matchup for Alex so far. In the career. only interesting matchup. The only yeah. one, because everything yeah. else has been entertaining. Like that yeah, was the yeah. selling point of every fight. Is I'm giving you a striker against a striker. Even like Bruno Silva, though. Like he's he's a Brazilian jiu jitsu, but he's he strikes. He doesn't use yeah. his jits. So like he went where to where was the challenging matchup the entire way? Yeah, dude. What are you talking about? He had uh, Andres Nicolaitis in his debut. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. Um, yeah, so yeah, I don't know if that's what's next. I think, like I said, Curtis Blades, Tom Aspinall, that's a tough task. I think if Cyril Gaon was at heavyweight, I would very much like to see him fight Cyril Gaon at heavyweight, but that's probably not ever going to happen because Cyril Gaon won't fight anybody right now, and he's not getting the belt, and I don't think Alex is fighting at heavyweight without the belt on the line. Um, but you do have to say, despite the fast rise and how convenient it was for Alex, the the guys that he's faced and, the, and what he's done with them is fucking insane dude like yeah jamal hill uh jan blahovich uh gidry twice izzy like i i think outside of once he fought for the belt once he's only fought champions and he's fucking beat all of them and finished most of them yeah it's insane luke thomas said uh he's like a big game hunter he's like not here to just like rise through the rankings and fight like everybody else he's just coming over here to big game hunt and he's fucking yeah. doing it it's it's crazy, dude. Because it's one thing to get those opportunities, but then to capitalize on them like the way that he has, it is truly, it's truly special. Because um, I think it's been two years, two and a half, almost three years since he was since he's been in the UFC. He's a two time champion in two divisions, and he's finishing former champions. Like Yidri's a former champion, he's finished him twice. Yeah, that's crazy. Yidri finished to get the belt. Finished Alex's coach. That's how he got the belt. And now he- I think that'll be the interesting thing when he goes to heavyweight is he's finally finding somebody who hasn't fought his damn coach. Yeah. And, and you know, it's interesting. Um, after the weight cut, the he weighs in at 205, 204.5, and he goes back up to 230. And Dana's like, he's heavyweights, they're too big. And it's like a lot of heavyweights who have success are guys that fight around 245 ish and don't cut yep. weight. Um, and that's probably where he'd be. He'd probably put on like 10, 15 pounds of muscle, not cut any weight. And he could probably do it pretty well. Yeah. You know, he's a big guy. Against the majority of that division of like the least stacked division in the entire UFC, at least on yeah. the men's side. 
Yeah, HLB Comer to Sheriff fought Jones. He's gonna go up fight John Jones, another guy that <laughs> damn it. God damn it. <laughs> That's classic. That was brutal, right? John Jones against Tashera when he fucking tore his shoulder apart, dude. Oh my that god. That was awful. Yeah, but um, you know, it sucks. I really wanted Yuji to win this one because I wanted a trilogy just because it's such a cool matchup. Both these guys are so badass. But at this point, Yuji's gonna have to um really go learn some things he can't just be that crazy guy because when that doesn't work it's just it, it's he gets knocked out blunder says yeah. i'm a casual so it seems to me from the outside that Pereira's career is pretty crazy how good would you guys say he is relative to past fighters who have had legendary careers the issue uh, for him is always going to be longevity in that argument because he came over so late in his career already he's 36 37 i think already um so eventually that the age will catch up with them, but you cannot, I mean, you look at the guys that he's faced now and what he's done. He's always UFC debut. He knocks out Michaeliadis with a flying knee. Uh, then he goes toe to toe with Bruno Silva. And after that, he, fa- he knocks out Sean Strickland in the first round. That's a champion. He knocks out Israel Adesanya, a champion. He loses to Izzy losing to a champion is not really a big deal in my opinion. Um, he beats Jan Blahovich, another champion. He knocks out Yuzhu Prohaska, a champion. He knocks out Jamal Hill, a champion. And then he knocks out Yuzhu, a champion. That's insane, dude. Since, I mean, since, and not even since he fought Izzy, actually. His last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fights in two years, by the way, seven fights in two years, all against champions or former champions uh, or future champions. And he's finished all of them except for one. That's and my big my legitimate. big point to Blunderbub would be like it's hard to compare previous fighters to now because mm-hmm. the game is massively changed. Like yeah. you, like even like GSP, right? Like his skill set comparatively to like the top tier of like skill sets now is completely different. It's you you go down. Guys, he was so good. He yeah, yeah, he would have success. Him. But he would not be as ahead of the game as he was yeah, back true. then. Yeah, yeah. Like there's there's so many more people that are at that level than there were back in the day. Like you don't have, like you don't have Matt Matt Hughes's and Sean Shirks that are literally just one thing, and they're so yeah, good at it that that's it. True, and and one thing that will always count against him as well <clears throat> is like he doesn't have that well roundedness and. I don't think he'll ever be like one of the goats because, well, it depends on what your goat argument is, right? But I don't think he's the greatest fighter even right now. No. Nah. Because, you know, I, I think Akalai could probably beat him. Um, if they fought like 10 times, he beats him a few times. Um, so he doesn't have that well roundedness to be considered like the best to ever do it. Um, yeah, it's a big there is an echo right now. Uh, and I can't hear it, and it is throwing me off. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can fix that really quick. Um, yeah, that is coming from Toasty. I just muted him, and it's not coming back. Uh, Toasty, I don't know if you need to reset your AirPods or whatever you've got in there. Um, but the well-roundedness is not going to be there like it is for John Jones or even DC, who found knockouts later in his career. Um, but he does have the resume of just destroying the best in the sport and that does count for something um yeah i don't hear the echo anymore toasty um and you're unmuted i got you back uh let's see sam says no headphones equals echo perhaps i think do you have earbuds in or like earbuds sure does you're not muted you can talk <laughs> i unmuted you i know <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but yeah, uh that that's always going to be um that that's the part of uh, you know, fights or fighters like Alex is and those types of discussions is there's like there's no real perfect answer if we're being honest. Like even John Jones who probably has the greatest claim, there's still positive steroid tests. So there's always going to be some pushback and some angle where you can discredit or um say like, "Oh no, he's not quite that guy." But Alex does and will continue to build on his claim, especially if he goes to heavyweight. If he goes to heavyweight and beats out another champion caliber fighter, it's just like, what are we doing, man? It's crazy. Um, but there, all, there will always be people who will say, 
Alex has made a legendary Hall of Fame run out of kickboxing, worst kickboxers in MMA. Yeah. Which and and it it's also like like this this uh this idea of like who's the greatest like there's such it's such a general thing like what you think is the greatest what I think is the greatest like yeah what we need to set some ground rules here yeah like, well there's like three Mayweather types thinks of who greatest. sold the most tickets yeah there's like three types of greatest there's like the biggest the actual best skill wise and then there's the resume and those three yeah. are all kind of like depends Ganskow says Alex is speed running the goat title I mean you you kind of is. Hey everybody, Ramiro and Will here. Thank you so much for watching that short clip. It's just a small clip of what we covered this last Sunday. Yeah, if you want to check out the full fight card recap, uh, the link is in the description and it's going to be on screen at the end here. Uh, don't forget to go back and watch our fighter interviews that we have. Uh, and don't forget to tune in live every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern, uh, and you can join in on the fun. Yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, Hit the notification bell, goes a long way. All right, everybody, thanks for watching that short clip from Story of the Fight.